So today we decided that we're going to talk about how to grow your database digitally. And I think this is a really important subject, fun fact, because of what I do, I'm always looking at the NAR reports of, of home buyers and sellers. And 97% of all buyers have used the internet during their home search process. Now, why is that important? Because the last known figure in 1997 is when they started asking that question, only 2%. So that kind of tells you what technology has done in the last 20 plus years. I mean, it was definitely, you know, I've been in the business 25 years. So I think that definitely talks to the strength of the change of the, the modern consumer. So it's actually we, surprising to me that it's not a hundred percent. Well, you also have to throw in the percentage but. for air. You have to throw in <laughs> that percentage of an old a, aging population. You and yeah. I were raised in a, in a time where right. we were, we were the transition generation, right? Yeah. We, we had the work ethic. We could still work at 13. And yet we, that's when technology was really, you know, we had the Atari, we had, uh, the, the, we had the Nintendo first gen, 8-bit. <laughs> that, that was the fast one. So I think, um, I think that 3% could be A, an older population, B, room for error, C, rule. Because we know that people who live more rural don't have necessary access to uh, the internet. So yeah. they may not use it. Plus, if they're more rural, don't even there's not it. that many houses. Right. So <clears throat> I was I was kind of joking, but at the same time, like that's a really good explanation, or it makes ton tons of sense. But well, last week we talked about the tools, the the tools that everyone needs. Right. So this week, and and you know me, true to form, I always I always write a list before I go into anything. Rarely do we stay on topic, anyways, but. <laughs> You know, the first one I came up with, and this is one that you have a tremendous amount of experience in, is creating a funnel. It's not just about having a website anymore. While that's important, while we agree that that's important, mm -hmm. but what we talked about, or what's probably more important now, is a funnel. You want to yeah. add to that and give your insight into the importance of a funnel? Yeah. I. You know, this is... Um, one of the things that, and I'll speak to really kind of like where where we're at right now in the marketplace and like some of the transitions that we've seen over the last couple of years, um, you know, previously to uh, Corona, I mean, there was still just so much, you know, capacity for, for belly to belly, handshakes, you know, getting in the trenches, doing their stuff. But when, you know, when the pandemic first hit, like it really, I think that really spurred a lot of like, of a moment of like, wow, I, you know, I, I can't just continue to do business the way that I previously did business. And now it's not like it, it accelerated a lot of like what was already happening to the point of like, that's what people expect now. Like a no longer, like that's the expectation. People, you know, almost expect to be able to jump on a Zoom. People almost expect to be able to do, you know, find and do whatever they, they need online. Um, and having a funnel, having an online presence, the ability to, to capture people, give them the information that they want and they need, um, you know, without, you know, without the barriers of, you know, some of the, some of the ways of, of doing business in the past. Um, some of the things that we're seeing right now, that's extremely effective and efficient for, for agents is, you know, running webinars, like online webinars is just a massive um, opportunity for, you know, attracting new business. And this is stuff that could be selling at masses all the time, you know, so you can have, a presentation or an explanation of something of way of delivering value and information to people that's working for you all the time. And it's not, you know, having to make calls, having to, 
um, you know, door knock, having to do that traditional, not knocking that stuff that still works, but there's just more efficient ways of going about doing things. Yeah. And I, and I think the, the interesting thing with, with that is to your point, the problem with traditional sales activities is that they will always work. It's mm-hmm. just that they're not as efficient as they once were. Yeah. You know, now you have to dial a hundred numbers depending on the source. Of course, if you're in the real estate space and you're calling expireds and for sale by owners and they're newer, I mean, you're going to have to dial a lot more times to get a hold of somebody on the phone. But if uh-huh. you're calling maybe a colder audience, just homeowners around listings and sales, you're still dialing a hundred numbers just to talk to 10 people. Mm-hmm. So that I, I think 25 years ago when I first got into the business, that was at least double. So right. I think that has a good indication of, of where the consumer's at in this modern day and age. But I also think that um, it's, just, it's, it's just less effective. So you have to grind out more. You have to put in more hours because the only component, if, if you're only getting 10% of people answering, the only option you can do to get more people to answer is to dial more numbers, to spend right. more time dialing. I wouldn't use a, I used to use a triple line dialer, but now you're seeing all these lawsuits that are coming out. So, so I wouldn't touch it. So going into <laughs> the webinar and you did, you've done great with your webinar, right? Now I got to watch you when you were doing them live, mm-hmm. but then I also got to watch you when you, when you did it really, really, really great. And it was just on the spot. You turned it into uh, an evergreen. So it was mm-hmm. just automated. So you ran that 24 seven and I got to watch you generate leads over and over and over again while you're on vacation, while you're sleeping, while right. we're doing something like this. And what, what kind of webinars do you, are you finding that are the best conversions to generate leads? Let's say um, seller leads and buyer leads. What, what do you think yeah. would be the best one? Well, r- right now, I, I think the, um, I, I try to take an approach of things to look at something that is not so, you know, seasonal or temporary. Like what's something that can be evergreen and can run indefinitely? Um, you know, pre, I mean, just look at the market just over the past couple of months. You know, if we were, if we tried to build all of our time and effort and energy around getting you know, new listing leads because the inventory was non-existent. Um, You know, we would have put all of that time and effort and energy into that, but you know, that, you know, that market had changed. So one of the things that I would would suggest for, for folks, you know, if you don't have a particular niche, it's just first time home buyers. Like there's so much information and so much um, uh, support and help that these folks need you know, they don't know, they haven't gone through the experience. They don't have that personal experience of buying a home already. Um, and this can be extremely unique to their market, their, you know, the loan programs that are available in their state or their county. So there's a lot that they can, you know, a lot of value that can be shared in that type of environment where you're talking to people, um, and you're able to share really, really valuable information and help people understand what that journey is, understand what the things that they're going to need or the things that are going to come up that they have not had that personal experience around. Um, so I think that that is something for like if you if you wanted to get into it, could be you know an extremely um, you know good place to start, and it's that's never going to go away, right? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I was listening to uh, an old Dan Kennedy talk mm-hmm. interview uh, on the Magnetic uh, Podcast, uh, Magnetic, Magnetic Marketing Podcast. And this, this was just last week. And what was interesting is that they were talking about generating leads online in the past, say 10 years ago. Right. And it was really easy because all you had to do was have some sort of newsletter and people would just be willingly to put their name and email address and do that. But now it's, it's much different because more mm-hmm. people are doing it. So you really have to come up with what we refer to as, as a, as a lead magnet. So 
do you think, and, and here's my kind of thought process. So let's say that somebody is looking to focus on sellers mm -hmm. and they want to, you know, most sellers, let's say they sell their home on average about every 10 years. So they forget about the process. So if you come up with a video that you post on YouTube mm -hmm. that is meant to drive traffic of how to sell your home in, you know, whatever city, and then in that you put, you download your free report, you know, sign up for my free newsletter, or sign up to get my free report, which would in turn generate the lead. So in fact, are you not really kind of creating a, doing it that way? Is that equally as effective as a webinar? Or do you think that you should be better off putting that in a webinar format and run traffic to the registration? <coughs> Um, so my, my personal opinion right now is that we are, you know, we're fighting for attention and people's attention span. You know, we, you know, we have, you know, you, you take, for example, like TikTok or Instagram reels, you know, we're talking 60 seconds, you know, we could take all of that information and compact it into one 60 second video. You know, what is somebody more likely to do? Are they going to watch a 60 second video or you know, read through a, a PDF. So um, I, I don't necessarily think that a PDF is a bad thing or some sort of download is a, is a bad thing because everybody's going to consume information differently. And it can be a great place to, you know, I, I mean, you could take your list and make a video of it. But I think for as far as like consumption is concerned, you're, there's just a much higher probability of somebody watching a 60 second or a 90 second video. Um, and that can be the download, right? That can be the value that they're getting. It doesn't necessarily have to be delivered in, you know, PDF. It's like, Hey, get my, get this list of, you know, your, your top five things that sellers, you know, must do in order to get the, the best possible price or to make themselves competitive in this, this market. Um, so, the, the format of delivering the value, I think, will change, you know, over time. Um, and I think for right now, for the market that we're in, the, the you know, the where people are, uh, attention is at, you know, that's probably, in my opinion, a, a, you know, the, one of the better ways to deliver that type of content. You know, and I think that's a really good point that you bring up because reels, I mean, I, I find myself always and. I try to be very disciplined on the amount of time that I spend just kind of brazing, but every now and then you go down mm -hmm. the water or the, the rabbit hole. Right. But I think this is a good point to say that you can't just do one thing and expect a million things to, to happen because of it. You need to right. do that 60 second reel. You need to do that 60 second tech talk. Could be one of the same thing, but just on different platforms, right. but also do the webinar, do the <laughs> download have all these different ways so people can engage in your in your content because you know mm -hmm. 25 years ago the only thing that i could do was spend a lot of money on classified ads and right. i was doing these small little classified ads and it went into the into the regional newspaper i didn't know who was going to call me i didn't know if anyone was going to call me and right. my phone rang but then it was just a lot of time having to field those leads whereas now you get to to create all these different pieces of content, you get to decide where you're going to deploy and distribute those on mm -hmm. which, whether it be social media, whether it be pay-per-click, whether it be Google ads, whether it be, you know, whatever, whether it be traditional marketing right. and generate those leads because different people might, you know, I might be walking, I might be on a, I might be at the airport, I might catch a 60 second reel, I might download that, that that five second PDS right. or I'm, I might go and watch that webinar when maybe I'm at the hotel or at, when I'm at home. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, I think it's good to diversify. You can have one yeah. piece of content. You know, we were talking about how to sell your home in XYZ market and that one subject can, you can create five, six or more pieces of yeah. content to deploy out. Absolutely. You know, and just, I think it's such a great way to be able to, you know, take a broader 
you know, process, broader scope, something that's much, you know, larger in scale and saying, hey, here's a little bite sized piece of it. You know, so when you are standing in line at the airport waiting for your coffee, you could you, you can could have the opportunity to consume something. And that's, you know, that's another touch point. That's another opportunity to build that know, like, and trust with your prospects, with your potential clients. Um, and it's an easy way for them to, you know, have those little micro uh, um, engagements with you um, where it's not a massive commitment for, you know, their, their time. So. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's also important to say that you need to do something. You know, one of the things mm -hmm. that you, you may actually hear me say often too, is that right now there's likelihood that within a three to five mile radius of where somebody lives, somebody's thinking about selling a home. And according to Google, 88% of those people, they're going to first go to the internet and start searching for information. How do I mm -hmm. sell a home? How do I buy a home? Um, right. You know, what are the competitions on that? And if you can't be found, if someone can't engage in your content or find your content, then there's a hundred percent probability that they're not going to use that person <laughs> as their real estate agent. It's just, it's tr yeah. truth, right? Because we know that people work with people who they know, like, and trust. And that they know in real estate and if yeah. they don't know that you exist on this planet kind of comes back to that saying is that if a tree falls in a forest and there's no one there to see it does it actually make a sound and yeah. if somebody wants to sell a house and they don't know that you exist on planet earth you might be the best agent you might be the most qualified and the best agent but if they don't know you if nobody yeah. knows you you're not getting the business which and and i think that kind of goes into maybe a side point is how important having a, you know, a lot of, I find a lot of real estate agents, not, I, I shouldn't just pick on real estate agents or, or the sales profession. I think maybe it's just people in general. We want that immediate gratification. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to create one video, you know, get through that uncomfortableness. It was uncomfortable. You know, for, for us, when we first started, it was, it was really uncomfortable, but we got through it but they want to get through it and then all of a sudden they want to post it and they're like, Whew, I'm done. Right. Now I just want the leads just to roll in. I want the come list me calls just to roll in. And it's just, that's not going to happen. If you're not going to do it consistently time and time again, you may as well not even do it once. Would you agree with that? hundred percent. Yeah. That's, um, <clears throat> I, one of the, one of the things, and this is applicable across the board in a lot of different facets, you know, it's like, um, you know, is this something that I can do every day forever? Right. Um, and that's like a really great example of that, you know, not specifically in this, but like in my, you know, outside, you know, I'm talking about like, I, I've been doing intermittent fasting for, for years now. So like what, like, I'm not going to like not eat carbs or not do this and that but intermittent fasting works really well for me and it's something that i can do consistently every single day and it's not a challenge or it's not a problem i'll drink coffee till like noon and i'll have some food and that's something that i can maintain indefinitely it's not going to impact my you know my, my overall life so i don't have to like have this like new fad diet so uh i think that's a you know it's awesome point to to make in in regards to this yeah. You know, it's other thing that I think is interesting is the effectiveness now of some of the more traditional direct mail components, mm -hmm. you know, going, going back to uh, one of our mentors, Dan Kennedy, uh, he's always been on direct response marketing well before it was popularized with the digital space. And um, I think now that the volume of mail is down really, really low, I think there's an opportunity there, especially for people who <clears throat> want to stay in front of their past clients, their, mm -hmm. their friends, their family, their, 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 their sphere of influence. If they want to stay in front of them, I think direct mail is really highly effective, especially now, mm -hmm. um, especially with what you choose to do, but also as a form to turn those people from the traditional, maybe physical world, for lack of a better term, and get them over onto digital. You know, the QR code, for example, you and I have talked about this, is that we, we used to laugh 
about people using QR codes pre-pandemic because nobody knew how to use them. The adoption rate for the QR code, I mean, that's, that's a technology that's been around for, I think, a few decades. But yet it took the pandemic to come in for, for people to adopt it and use it. And now it's something that we're using in our everyday life. So if you implement some sort of physical, traditional mailers, direct mail, mm -hmm. and you have that QR code, you have to have that call to action, then that could actually get them. For example, we were talking about traffic to a webinar. What great way to do traffic to a webinar is you send a invitation to maybe someone who expired three months ago, a year ago, mm -hmm. uh, about how to sell your home in today's crazy market. And now you've converted them from a traditional lead, which you may or may not have gotten over time, right onto a digital lead. So I don't think that people should really discount the, the digital space as, uh, excuse me, the, the, the physical space altogether. I think people need to adopt a 360 degree strategy. Yeah, I, um, I, I really think that mail, direct mail, physical, you know, it's going to have a, a huge, you know, resurgence. Um, you know, there was a point in time back, like subprime days, that's all, like 90% of the marketing that I personally did was direct mail. Like that was just mailers, just massive, massive amounts of mailers. Um, <clears throat> but now, you know, this is, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I haven't personally done any direct mail stuff or anything like that for a long time. But I think that with, you know, with that, with so many people going online, that's uh, something that is slept on quite a bit, or, you know, it has not, um, has has not been adopted by a lot of the newer people but they just don't know right like that was something that was used very heavily in the past but it's you know kind of fallen out of fallen out of graces um so i think there's there's definitely a lot of opportunity there um and <laughs> you know talking on your your qr like i tend to think of myself as like a pretty you know, uh, up to date type of person, but like, I literally didn't realize how easy it was to use a QR code until the pandemic. Like, right. I didn't, I'm like, I'm like, Oh wait, you, you're telling me all I have to do is open my camera. Like I missed that step. Like I well, thought I had to well, have I, like, <laughs> I think if you have an iPhone, all you have to do is open your camera. I think for those that actually yeah. have an Android phone, I think you actually have to have an app. I, I right. think, I don't know. Right. You and I are on iPhone. <laughs> Everything we have have is iOS. You know, so but the I other thing that. That, I thought um, I had to have, I thought I had to have app. <laughs> you know, when you did direct mail, I mean, you were how many pieces were you sending out? I mean, you oh, were yeah. sending out a lot, Un ungodly amount, like yeah, tens I mean, of thousands, and it wasn't easy. I remember, I remember the. <laughs> I didn't. I never went to that that scale. Yeah, I think I at the most I was doing maybe a thousand a month. You were doing tens thousand. It wasn't that easy, but now. They have everyday direct mail that mm -hmm. you can literally create everything you need at your computer, push a few buttons, put in your credit card, and it goes out next week. Yeah, it's crazy. Awesome. So it's, it's a lot easier. It's a lot, you know, you, you trade off. You, we knew the process back in the day. The mm -hmm. process is different now, but you have to learn the process now. But once you learn the process, it's something that you can literally probably have a have some sort of direct mail piece sent out from your desk hour or two, maybe, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. So which, the other interesting component is you spend that time, you spend that money on generating that lead or that traffic, mm -hmm. whether it be from digital or physical, but you get them to, your, you get them to the webpage. What's interesting now, and we all know this became popular because of Amazon. If you're looking for some shoes, it starts showing up all over the place. You know, 15 years ago, that was very challenging and very expensive to do. Nowadays, it's not that expensive and it's not that challenging once you've done it once or twice to do. So you could, you could be hosting an open house in, say, two weeks. You could send out an invitation mailer 
direct people to a landing page about the property, the coding on that landing page triggers Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google, and now your open house is showing up everywhere. So it's no longer mm -hmm. are you trying to do a one shot, that's all, right? You're not trying to just right. get that one shot to get that lead, the opt-in. Now you have the ability for relatively inexpense. I don't even know if that was a, a correct formation yeah. of a sentence, but with relatively low cost, you can actually start following them around the internet for like 30 days, which drastically increases your ability to generate and cultivate that lead. Absolutely. I, w I was just uh, talking with some of my team members just, just early before we jumped on this call on this. And, um, you know, a couple of the things that, I mean, that's, that's really amazing about this is, you know, when you have these audience, we're number one, I mean, we're talking about, you know, building a brand, you know, building that know, like, and trust with people having this top of mind awareness where you're able to consistently show up online where it's not intrusive. You're not texting them. You're not, you know, e emailing them. You're just there. Right. And you're, you're able to build this brand that makes you, you know, almost larger than life where you're following around people all over. Um, and you know, with this, it's, it's very, you know, a very cost effective to have to be in front of these people, you know, and you're, we're talking about, you know, most people, they don't have like this massive database, they don't have this massive sphere of influence. But when you add those people, you know, if it's a list of 1000 2000 3000 5000 people that you have, well, you can stay in front of them for, you know, a couple dollars a day, which is crazy to think about, you know, having those types of impressions and having the capacity to be top of mind for these people. Um, you know, with Facebook, Facebook products, you know, uh, Facebook and Instagram, you can go back six months. Like, so you don't even have to have somebody that has engaged with you recently. Like you can go back in time and, and still capture those people. With Google, you know, we're talking um, at over, over 500 days that you can go in the past and say, hey, anybody that's visited my site, you know, I can get back in front of. Um, so the capacity to to build this audience, nurture this audience, and stay top of mind with them is 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 really quite remarkable. Yeah, and I I think that people change is hard. Change change is hard. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the real estate and, and really any sales profession, you know, there's that saying, you eat what you kill. So you're always focused on the business that's mm -hmm. in front of you, the business at hand, and everything kind of goes off the, the wayside. But you and I came right. up in traditional sales. We know what it's like when you're grinding. You're grinding nine to five, hit, trying to get those leads, and then mm -hmm. God forbid you want to go on vacation. So now you have to grind extra to go on vacation, and then right. you're stressed out that whole week that you're on vacation, and then you then you sack and then you come back and you're penalized for going on vacation because now you have to grind two times more to make up for the 10 days that you came off and right. if if people would just to adopt to what i call the modern consumer journey stop being so salesy you know i i resemble your comment i don't like getting those cold texts whenever i get a cold text i block them i delete them I don't even mm -hmm. read it because typically it's something if, if they're texting me and they're not in my phone, they're not, they don't have that trust from me yet. You, you don't have the right to text me right now. Now you can text me if you want, but I'm just going to block you and, and delete you. I have to the point now is that my phone, because our phone is our little walking Rolodex, there is every possible person that either could call me or that I could call them. I have America's tires in my phone, is in my phone. So if I get an unidentified number, you know, there's a setting on your iPhone that I mm -hmm. can just silent uh, people who aren't in your contact list. So they just go straight to voicemail. So I've, I've done that. 
And I think that if I do that and I'm in sales and if people agree that the best person who's going to know you, like you, and trust you are going to be people who are more like yourself, you know, because people, what is that saying? That the birds of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, if you're, if your ideal client is a lot like you and you don't answer unidentified calls and you don't like getting those cold texts and you don't like to be sold, then chances are neither do they. So these traditional activities that they're doing is really kind of pushing people away <clears throat> as opposed to attracting them, as opposed to staying top of mind. Because top of mind doesn't happen with you making a phone call once a quarter, once every six right. months, or maybe you just come out of the blue. Staying top of mind is a journey of just staying relevant in front of them by creating relevant content that would be valuable to the consumer. And uh, I think you're right on point when it comes to the difference between, you know, the benefits of having, but you got to do both. I don't, I don't think the yeah. traditional side of things, um, I think cold calling will always have a place. I think prospecting will always have a place where I think that people are really drastically missing the bus is their nurturing and their lead follow-up by not having that content. Cause we know that the consumer is going online. We know that. Yeah. And we know that they're consuming a lot of content. Uh, so if you're not doing that, then you're just making your job a lot harder to convert people into clients because of the fact that you don't have content to, to consume. Yeah. I, I think, um, <clears throat> you know, to, to talk on your point of like, you know, people, you know, that the, the, the cold and um, like, I, I think there's really, you know, it depends on where people are at, right? Like, so for somebody who has time, but doesn't have money or doesn't have experience, sometimes that's like the, you know, what they have to do to be able to get to that point, right? You know, they got to put in a little bit of that, that sweat equity to, you know, to, to earn those stripes or to, to build that confidence, to be able to, you know, then make that you know, make that content. So, um, you know, having to, having to try to do what they got to do to get to where they, they want to go. Um, you know, sometimes is the, you know, a path that, that a lot of, that a lot of folks need to, to go through or, you know, to, to get some experience on that. Um, here's a little tip for those people who are, um, you know, doing cold outreach. And if you are, um, uh, you know, a lot of times where you have uh, on a text message where it'll, you, you know, it will, or, or a phone call, yours, obviously you have it set to go directly to, you know, or just to block automatically. Um, or, you know, a lot of times they have those filters where it's like spam likely or, or whatever it is. Well, you can SMS somebody first instantly saying, hey, Brett, this is Luke. And then when I call, it's going to come up probably Luke. Oh, well, there's a tip that you just taught me. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So now I can That's punch why you through. get those probably, those probably now things I, now, come up. Now I can punch through your spam blocker <laughs> and say, hey, there's this always is, a loophole. Pro <laughs> this there's is probably always a Luke. <laughs> um, you know, going to your traditional, you know, those, those if, you don't, if you don't have the resources, which a lot of new people in real estate, they don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. Most people who get into real estate and mortgage, they didn't deliberately get into real estate and mortgage. They, it's, a, right. it's a secondary, usually by circumstance, that puts you into that. They, they accidentally, like, like me and you, we, we accidentally kind of got into the, the, the space. I, didn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't growing up as a kid saying that I was gonna be a real estate broker. That was, that was yeah. not <laughs> what I was thinking. There's a very but small here, percentage thing. of people. Creating content, there is no hard cost to it. There is your time. Mm -hmm. Now, there are certain things that real estate professionals, mortgage professionals, we all need. Number one, you need to have a pulse. That's a big thing. Number two, you've got to have a phone. I mean, that's the second mm -hmm. thing. Number three, I would say that you actually have to present yourself. You, you can't say things uh, you know, too ignorant, but you have to be presentable. But right. what you could do is you're, if, if, you, if you don't have the resources, 
and you can't pay for ads, you can't pay for direct mail, then you need to fall back on the traditional sales activity of telephone prospecting and knocking on doors. However, align that with the modern consumer journey and create that content. Create that content so when you're on that phone with people, you can send them something. Because most of the time you're gonna get a no. Most of the time if you're prospecting people, you're not gonna get a, hey, I'm so glad that you called. You're the 50th mm -hmm. person that's called me. Yes, I do want to meet with you. Very rarely are you gonna get that. Right. But to be able to say, look, I understand that you're busy. I, I'm, you're, I'm sure you're at work, but I'd like to see if I can you know, preview the property. That's a, a, good, a good idea to go and preview the property, but two, send them something valuable to them. Look, I have this uh, market report that talks about how to price your property in today's market. Would you be interested in receiving that? And because you already have that content created, and hopefully just not one piece of content, but you have multiple pieces of content, created mm -hmm. that shows that you are the authority in your market, then that's going to help you with your traditional activities. Yeah. The, that's what we um, used to do. Remember, remember we used to hit the appointments and we send out, look, uh, we're going to send you a packet of information. Please yeah. review it and let's set a, set a time up to have a conversation later. Because we knew yeah. way back then, that can you believe that was like almost a decade ago? I know. Uh, we knew that way back then, that regardless of where they're, all consumers are on a journey. And until they have an understanding of what's going on, they have most of their general questions answered, you're not getting anywhere with your, with your, with your service mm -hmm. you're offering. If, yeah. and, until they know what you do and what you cost, good luck. And, if, and if, if people out there think that they're that good at sales, that they're gonna take somebody who is still in their discovery mode and that you're gonna sit in front of them and you're going to high pressure sales them into signing a long-term listing or to buy something, that was so, that was so pre-2000. I, I just, it still works, just not as effectively <laughs> anymore. It, it, takes a, it takes a special skill set to be able to do that. But in for, when those opportunities are presented, it's most likely because they have that prospect has already gone through yeah. that journey in some fashion somewhere else. Maybe they got a lot of information from someone else or somewhere else, and then they ultimately just landed with with that individual where they got the majority of their questions answered. But most of the time, I mean, the you know, in, in uh, you know, in, in an example with internet leads like. And I think this is just in general, like like something like eighty five percent of people are going to work with the very first person that they they talk to, right? So if you're that person, and then you can help them along that that journey, um, then the probability of you winning that business over is pretty significant. Um, something that came up, kind of popped to mind when you were talking about you know the traditional you know doing the calls, um, but also uh, you know, stepping into, you know, the modern consumer thing, um, a really, a really effective bridge to that is taking these, these prospecting methods and techniques and just applying them online. You know, so many, everybody's, you know, uh, through, through direct message, um, you know, where you can connect with people, you know, on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, you know, we can hone in on our marketable area and begin to connect and build our database that way too. And it's just like, you know, you could, you could send out, you know, uh, 10, 20 new friend requests a day to people in your immediate area. You know, so a great example or great way to do this is like, you know, for example, on Facebook has Facebook groups and there is, there's no lack of local groups. There's no lack of like niche groups for your area. It could be like a local mom's group. It could be like a local like cyclist club group. It could be just like a local school board, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a school group or whatever. But connecting with people directly there in your in your market, sending them friend requests, sending them direct messages. Like this is another method of you know uh, you, you can create these connections, create grow grow your brand, grow your um, you know, grow your database there 
but also, you know, kind of a bridge between that old school traditional, you know, phone stuff and, and, and uh, start to step into the online and apply some of these principles to, to online and, um, you know, marry the, the best of both there. You know, I remember when you first taught me, you taught me that the whole social funnel aspect mm-hmm. of, because that's what you're talking about is the, is, the, yeah. is the social funnel. And what really, even to this day, makes me sit there and scratch my head is that even to this day, I come across professionals, whether they're in real estate or mortgage <clears throat> is irrelevant, but I just come across professionals who don't list what they do uh, for a living and they they don't have a way for people to learn more about what mm-hmm. they do on the living in their social profiles. And the reason why that's intriguing to me is because when you're face-to-face communication, our highest level of, of communication that we, we we have, when you're speaking to somebody at a networking event, at a party or, or whatnot, one of the first things that happens is that you're getting to know each other. You talk about family and you talk about work. What do you mm-hmm. do for a living? And yet, that's natural, that's accepted, but people to this day are still omitting that information from their various different profiles. And it's just, it's, it's mind boggling for me. Right. Yeah, I mean, I can understand from some aspect. I mean, there's, you know, people who don't want to do business that way. But if you're in any type of uh, role where you're dealing with, consumers or, or prospects and if you're you know in sales like it, it's just such a missed opportunity if you're not doing it right yeah. and that is that is a way uh and, and i everybody does it you know if you're commenting on somebody's post in you know online and like in facebook you comment and you say something in, intriguing or, or provide some sort of value they're going over to your profile and they're looking to see who who you are, what you do, you know, do they, can they connect with you? Can they resonate with you? Um, And like, you know, do, is your profile private? Like if you're trying, if you're in a position where you want to be doing business with people, like that's the first thing you need to do is make it, you know, so everybody can see you. Like, what are you trying to hide from people? Um, and if that's you, that's fine, right? You don't nope, you don't have to do business that way. You can build a massive business and not even be online. There's there's plenty of you know CEOs of huge companies that have zero social presence. But um, you know, but for for those people that are in the trenches, those people who are getting started, those people who are doing those face to face, those people who are putting in the hours, the grind, you know, are 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 are, are just getting started. I mean, that's an absolute necessity um, to, ha- to have that stuff. Sure. You know, and, and again, it's low or no cost, right? And, and I agree with you. Those people who are in a, a non, uh, non-business to consumer role, administration, back-end operations, you, you may not want to put what you're up. But if you're in sales, if you're mm-hmm. a real estate broker, sales professional, mortgage broker, uh, load officer, not having that on there is is going to hinder your ability to allow people if we go back to the national association of realtors home buyers and sellers people do business with they who they know like and trust and they know that you're in the business if they don't know you're in the business they might know that you like you and trust you but they might know like and trust somebody else in california that could be anyone and because they know that they're in the business, they, they get the business and not you. And that stings right. because you think that everybody knows that you're in real estate. But what the truth is, no, they don't. If you're right. not staying top of mind, they do not know that you're uh, in, maybe your mom and your siblings, best right. friends, your, your inner circle. But once you get out that inner circle, I think a lot of people think that people know them a lot better than what people actually do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Brett. Yeah. He was in, I remember he was in real estate compared to the person who posts every day about the new listing that is coming on the market and they see that and that's there all the time. Um, yeah, I couldn't, couldn't be more on point with that. Yeah. 
Well, we're at time. Any parting words of wisdom for our people? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. No, you know, that's, that's one thing that uh, I adopted a term from you is uh, taking imperfect action. Yeah. And this is something I was talking to uh, an agent to yesterday is that perfection leads to procrastination, leads to paralysis. And I think a lot of people are going through that when it comes to the digital space. So when you say, let's go, it's like, go, just go yeah. do it. Go do your video, go, go preview a neighborhood and talk about it. You know, go, go preview a neighborhood and do a face, uh, an Instagram re or uh, a YouTube reel and talk about the steps that you did to go and preview the neighborhood, right. 60 seconds. So, okay, we'll end it with that and uh, we'll, we'll catch everybody next week.